Hi, I'm Trisha Cruz. I'm the executive director of DataSite, and um, some of you might have heard of DataSite. We're a not-for-profit global initi initiative, a member organization. Um, we have uh, about 150 members worldwide right now and working with about 1,600 data centers and creating 14 million DOIs for um, the outputs of research. Um, one of the things that we really focus on is being open. And uh, whether it's open source, open development, and it's a challenge in that um, it's how you get this global community to work together and focus on what they want to do and how we can do it in the open. And one of the things that we really focus on is being collaborative and being collaborative with all kinds of partners who can help further our mission of making um, research data discoverable, accessible, usable, and being able to connect it to all those different parts of research um, with confidence and that's and with trust. Whoops. Uh, so I just popped this slide in here, um, kind of uh, uh, thinking about what Chuck was saying is um, we often operate behind the scenes and we're, we think of ourselves as a trusted PID registry along with uh, Crossref and ORCID. Um, and we have a shared goal of providing an open, connected, scholarly infrastructure to benefit researchers in an open way. And we often operate behind the scenes. People, um, researchers don't often see us, uh, but they know when they get a DOI, for example, that it's something valuable and that, that they can use. Um, focusing real specifically on what DataSite does, um, we're working on connecting um, data to data and um, thinking about that data and those outputs of research, whether it's an image, a text file, um, a piece of software, connecting all of those pieces together. And then connecting that to the researchers, connecting that to the grants and project and funding organizations, um, and then uh, data to the publications as well. And how we make these connections happen, I just wanna highlight a, a, a couple of projects. Is um, The first is the Freya Project. It's a three-year funded initiative coming out of the European Commission under the Horizon 2020 and um, making sure that our persistent identifiers are, are integrated and interoperate across a, a vast ecosystem. Um, and thinking about connecting, again, going back to that little circle thing, um, people, places, and things, whether those are instruments, software, physical samples, field stations, and more. Um, another thing that we're just launching, um, along with Crossref and the California Digital Library, and it's a really a community-run initiative, is the Research Organization Registry. And this is to create identifiers for research organizations so those research organizations can be connected to publications and, and data. Yay! <laughs> and uh, another thing is uh, something called RE3 Data. It's a searchable catalog of research data repositories from around the world. And we're working with AGU to really focus that tool on building a repository recommender tool so people can say, oh, where should I put my data? We can say, oh, here's a good place to put your data. It meets these FAIR guidelines. Um, the last thing is the Make Data Count project. Um, and this is working with the California Digital Library and Data One um, of creating usage metrics and data citations associated with data sets. So uh, again, to, to push data as a first class citizen. So when somebody's looking at a research data set, they can say, this has been downloaded this many times. Um, this is connecting to this particular publications. Here's how many citations are associated with it. This is a, a, a live right now. So if you Google make data count, you'll be able to figure out how to, how to do that. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is um, a plug um, for this is a hot off the press a book that uh, came together um, with uh, people in this room, uh, John Shidaki and Jennifer Lim, but also um, people uh, from uh, around the world um, supporting research communications. It's a guide to some of the things that, that you need to think about when supporting research communications. So I invite everybody to be the first to, to look at this and comment on it. And that's it.